How do you learn who you really are? It's not found in books. It's found on the battlefield. What's up, warriors? We are back again. I'm hanging out with Andrew from South Africa again. I love hanging out with Andrew because, man, I got, can I give you like a little praise and then I want to hear about your week? I actually love hanging out with you, man. You are one of the most genuine, sincere people who just like, I love your authentic energy and your hunger to grow. Like, it's cool when you're like, oh, damn it. Ah, I learned something right there. And I, I love that part to it. And so I really find you very relatable, especially when I work with people all the time to be able to have somebody who's like, yes, I'm hungry. And I like when like I get filled up and I can see you eating right away. So I really appreciate yeah. your, your candid honesty. I love it. I say thank you for that. I, I appreciate I appreciate these sessions more than you know. Um, always walk away with so, so much. Uh, um, sometimes it's, it's, it's so much information that I literally don't know how to process it all. It, uh, <laughs> it takes me a while. But um, but I love it. So I'm uh, happy to be back here. And uh, yeah, you'll, 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 you'll keep seeing me. <laughs> Awesome, man. All right, let's get in. How's your week going, man? I, I know we talked a little bit earlier on Monday about some balance stuff, but I want to hear about you. How's your week going? Uh, the week's been good. Um, I, I, that's, it's been a very positive week, been a very successful week, but um, it's been exactly that, is that um, it's been a struggle to to juggle it all. You know, I, 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 I want to be able to perform at the highest level on on you know all platforms and all facets, um, you know, make sure that I've got enough time, that I'm spending enough time in the gym, making spending enough time, and you know, excelling in my work, um, putting enough time into my side hustles, putting enough time into connecting with uh, my friends and my family, and just trying to make sure that I'm on top of it all. Um, but that it becomes quite overwhelming. Um, I do find I, I feel drained and exhausted. Um, it, it's winter on this side, so. <laughs> Maybe that's for playing a role, but for the most part, I am, I'm, I'm happy and I'm good, but I'm tired. <laughs> I, I can relate with you a lot, man. So I started, I did the same thing. I started feeling the same way. I was realizing that I was burning myself out. So I also this week uh, pulled back quite a bit. <laughs> like pullback for me is still like I'm using, I'm doing just an eight hour day instead of a 14 hour day, but that's pulling back for me. And so in which case, um, in the last seven months, I realized I was just pumping out massive days. And I started to run into that own, my own, like, it's not even, a, it wasn't sadness, not stress, not anger. I was running into just a fatigue. I was like, man, I'm just getting just smoked by the middle of this day. You know, normally I'd be just going, going, going. And I did start to catch myself on that same balance question. Body, friends, family, spirit or soul. Uh, working on my mind, my heart, acknowledging my own growth and uh, hitting a ceiling. And I think you've probably, you probably realized this too. Whenever you're on a journey, you're going to start running into an obstacle. And oftentimes we'll hit these glass ceilings where we're like, why am I hitting this? Now, the thing with the glass ceiling is you have to break through it. That's why we call it a breakthrough. You break through whatever this new thing is. It takes you to the next level. And then you start feeling that massive sense of growth again. But every new level brings a new devil. And that means I got to level up to beat a new boss. There's a new thing that's going to be there. Some next big um, challenge I have to learn how to outgrow so I can overcome. And I'm with you on that. What's the balance to this? How do I balance spirit? How do I balance self? How do I balance service? How do I balance this? And it's pretty tough, man. <laughs> it's a pretty tough deal. That's for sure. I'm I'm feeling that. Like it's... I said, there's no real problem. Um, I enjoy doing these things. I, I enjoy spending time with, with family and having that time to connect. And I enjoy going to the gym. I like excelling at work, but I come home, I'm, I'm flat, man. Like, you know, tires are, like, they are flat. I've got, there's nothing left in me where I look forward to going to bed. <laughs> Let's let's talk about like re refilling the cup. And uh, there's a few things to it. This isn't even like a toxic behavior thing. So a lot of times we we pour our cups out into others, but we're actually doing a positive service. But how do I fill up the cup enough to be able to pour more into others? 
And that's a, that's a big challenge for a lot of people, depending on certain personality types too. Some people identify their, all of their value is based on being able to achieve or do something to help other people. And who am I, if I'm not helping? And a lot of times if we're caught up in feeling, feeling like external forces is how I get my validation, you're going to be caught up and trying to continue to keep burning yourself out. Um, the most obvious uh, and most used example is the in the airplane, if the oxygen mask goes down, like you put your mask on first before you help others. We've heard this analogy probably hundreds of times. Well, you see people whose entire life is hold your breath as long as you can while you help as many people put their mask on. And eventually they do become the liability or they just get taken for granted or advantage of. So how do you fill your cup when filling your cup is, I have to do things for others in order to feel like I've, I matter. That's a big, that's a hard one for people. The other one, and this is probably more a you and me one, which is like, there's this trigger, almost like this. I, I'm not trying to say negative, but like a fight or flight thing that goes like, almost we have to like pull back completely <laughs> to recharge. I know I do, but I'm like, I have to, I have to disconnect here. I have to unplug for a while to just recharge Go off the this grid, battery. man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like just pff, tuck, <laughs> tuck tail, go off the grid. Like I like I just disappear so I can recharge for a couple of weeks and be like, okay, listen, for two weeks, no one hears from me. Is he even alive? What happened to him? Just because I'm just like, I just caught. You know, you just you you you're so depleted, and that's exactly what happens. Where I just completely disconnect and I I, I literally call it going ghost. I just ghost myself. And then once I'm ready to put myself back out there, I'll even say that, hey guys, so sorry, I needed to go off the grid. What's been happening? How you been? Like I didn't, it's, 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 it's how I would say I currently refill the cup. Yeah. So here's, here's, yeah. here's where I'm at. I might level up. I'm right there with you off the grid. I need to unplug completely. Now I'm in a position that's very difficult to do that because I am also the one who runs the entire organization for where we're at. I am the creator of all the pieces. So me off the grid leaves a lot of people sitting high and dry. And so I can't completely disconnect like I would like to. I would love to ghost. I would love to do that. But if I ghost, it lets a lot of people down. Hmm. Now I'm in a conundrum. What do I get when I'm unplugged? Like, what is it that you're receiving? And this is where I'm at on my evolution. What do I receive when I unplug? How do I recharge? What am I doing during that process? And can I do that process while still being able to at least do some of what I need to do with people without completely ghosting. What do you see? I mean, personally, I, I don't know how to do that because I get to this point where when I'm able to perform, I perform and I'm able to give, I give. And there's, there's, there's moments where you, know, you have your high highs and your low lows and when I'm able to, to give, then I will. But then when I'm not able, to, I have to take a couple steps back or else I feel like I'm unable to, to add any value. Um, I, I use the same analogy when I'm, when I'm training. If my body is feeling tired and I just don't have the strength, then I literally just won't go and train because I feel like, what's the point? And I, you know, I take that same analogy where I just, sometimes your body just needs time to rest and recharge. So I, I, I literally... I don't know how you do that. Honestly, I'm, I'm thinking about it now. You, you never really think about the other person's perspective. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. I, my, my system is do what you can. As soon as you can't do it, take steps back, go off the grid, recharge the battery, come back and fight another day. Yeah. And I love the, I love the, um, the option. Now, this is probably for the listeners who are like, I don't have the luxury of being able to go off the grid. I got family, I got kids, I've got my job or my career or my business I run. I don't have the ability to use that system. It was like, a, almost as like when I was a young man system. But now I got kids. I can't just not be there for my kids for a month. You know, I can't just do that. You know, I can't just not be there for my wife for a month. I can't just leave my business for a month. So damn. I wish I could. I wish I could just go and Costa Rica this thing for a month and just be like, 
Puerto Vida and just be like, I'm pure life for a month and then I come back. We can't. Like it's not my options. I built my life around a certain situation where if I do that, it ends up meaning I come back to a burned down home. And so I can't do that. <laughs> so I have to figure out what do I get from that recovery when I'm unplugged and how can I incorporate that into my life to fill my cup while still being able to fill others? And this isn't, it's tough. I think the hard part about that balance part is it's not just one category. I wish it was just my body needs rest, but I also have to fill my, my spiritual cup. I have to do my physical cup and I have to also be working my own personal growth while still helping other people. And so I'm consciously, very deliberately right now, taking time in between my obligations that I still have to rest. I'm doing an unplug during my time. So what I did is I pulled my schedule back quite a bit because it wasn't balanced. 14 hour days are not balanced days. They're not. And so I'm like, okay, let's pull it back to eight hours for me, which that's a full work day still. But for me, that's, that opens up a lot of windows. I'm not, I'm not taking as many phone calls. I'm pushing things uh, to the to different days. So I don't have to have full days like this. And I'm like, okay, this is giving me time between to just relax. Now, some days I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do a little bit of like breathing stuff or I'll, you know, I'll take a nap and rest, get a workout in if I need to, and just unplug for a little bit, but I'm, I'm really chilling it out, pulling it back. I think it's also difficult too, because a lot of what I do is deep work, which means if somebody's really struggling, I'm going to, I'll come in with you. I'm not going to talk about just, oh, tell me about your feelings. I'm like, let's go in and fucking fight, dude. Let's go in and fight whatever this is. What's what's attacking you right now? I'm coming. Put my shield right next to you and we'll fight it. And that, that takes a toll. Going into hell is not free, guys. <laughs> just, it's, you got, it takes a toll. And even with my armor, like, I'm like, oh man, that smoked me. And, and you know, even when I do... Any, anything between cognitive uh, work or neuro-linguistic work, I get tired. Like it takes a toll. And uh, anybody who's done like real deep work like that, you know, like, man, it's not, it's not free. You're like, whoa, that one gassed me. I don't know. Have you ever watched Stranger Things? Stranger Things. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I yeah. have, I have, I have. You know yeah, she, what's her name? Yeah, Eleven. Eleven. When she uses her abilities and she gets like the bloody nose and stuff. Yes. It's, it's like that. It's like, I, I can't use these abilities and not get like the bloody nose. And if I go too far, my ears are bleeding. I'm like, oh, it was awesome. And it was good powers. And you did something, but you're like, oh, that one, that one drained the battery. No, I, 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 I completely feel that. I mean, I've had, I've had sessions with you and, you know, we just, we just start exploring some topics and think and talk about things that uh, I've never really um, even thought deeply about and I, I i feel physically drained afterwards i'm like good lord that was that was fucking intense man <laughs> so for you to be able to to do that on on more than you're speaking to i've seen you deal with groups i am i know that you speak to uh you have a couple of these calls sometimes lined up back to back mm -hmm. i i take my hat off to you for being able to 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 keep going through and and be able to to work with this many people on that on that level um i mean even with myself just just going through my own own motions is like whoo good lord i need a break from me <laughs> <laughs> agreed yeah even on any given day even today for example um i ran a men's group this morning i ran a women's group this morning we have our call today. I have a business group to run in an hour from now. And then I'm doing a live webinar training tonight uh, to help people fight anxiety. So I get about a two hour window today to unplug. Normally after that, we will go live too. And we would also help people live. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to pull that back a little bit. I have to recharge. But that's still... Uh, one, two, that's three groups, a podcast recording and doing a two hour live Q and a training on one of the toughest things people are facing today. 
and that's recharging for me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't get that. I'm going to be real with you, man. <laughs> um, and that's what I wanted to actually, because I, I wrote it here, where when you said you, you you took time to pull back, and you were busy speaking about it now, where you said that, like you know, you'll you'll take a nap, you'll go to the gym if you need to, but. My question to you then is, what is it that you do that truly that you find relaxing? I mean, I understand that we're all different people and we have different different things that work for us. Um, but what is it that you feel that truly recharges you? That's a good question, man. That's a really good question. And it's uh, I think that's kind of where I'm trying to also probe it myself. I uh, was taking more naps or just resting more. And yesterday I took uh, I took three naps yesterday just to let that the because like, i feel better today already I, maybe it just was sleep deprived or putting pushing so hard but then i would find myself waking up at 3 a.m pretty often and i have like this desire to create or write and i have to take advantage of those moments when they come up like i'm like that's a new idea or that's a new thing and even uh yesterday i was up at 3 a.m writing and that writing was uh, so useful that I did an advanced training on it that night. And the guys were like, wow, this was really powerful. This was needed. Like I needed this, this training. So sometimes I have to listen to those 3 a.m. moments. So you're right. What is recharging? Because I wish I could say it's just sleeping more, but maybe, you know, it's a balance between needing more sleep and more rest, but then also having an outlet or a creative outlet that I allow myself to explore without having to suppress it to do more phone calls. You know, and so, yeah, it's, I think that I'm in my own discovery process for this because otherwise I completely agree with you. I would be completely disconnected, completely unplugged, completely unplugged. But I've done that a couple of times. And each time that I've done that, I just come back to house fires. Hmm. And I, I can get that. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people that depend on you and um, I, I can see, you know, it's uh the shepherd that leads the lamb. And uh, if, you, if you don't look after the flock, <laughs> they'll get lost. Um, which, which is why I ask, because like, I, I understand like getting, getting in more sleep. Like personally, I feel like, you know, sleep is, is super important. I, I, for a long time, I was, um, how do I say? convinced with all this uh, how do I say toxic hustle culture if you would call it that where they were like you know graft while they're sleeping and uh, you know it who needs eight hours and like just just you just go for it winners do whatever it takes and then you know for a while I did that and then realized no nah, man I that that sucks um it sucks a lot <laughs> And I do believe in getting good sleep and getting get like eating well, but like as, as, as much as I try to balance it, I just, I just sometimes feel like there's times where I feel like I've overslept and then I feel even more tired mm -hmm. or now I feel completely lazy and I don't want to do shit. Um, the other day you mentioned the rule of 33. Um, I believe that's what you called it. And, and I, and that really spoke to me where you said, if I've got this correct, please correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, where you said 33% where you're working with a mentor, 33% of where you, when that's working up, 33% where you're working with people on the same level and 33% where you're working with people that are rising to be at your level. I understood it but then thought about it more and I would like a little bit more elaboration on exactly how the rule of 33 works. Yeah, it's a tricky thing. And again, I didn't make that up. That comes from, uh, I forget, I think I saw Ty Lopez repeated after somebody else's thing. So like, it's just oh. people regurgitating information. But in which case, um, the rule of 33 was at least you should be doing a third of your time learning from a mentor and or reading books. Uh, you know, getting new information, pulling in wisdom. Uh, you should spend at least a third of your time. I'd probably say within your business time, I guess. Like you need to be learning. You need to have people who you are challenging each other and growing with, people at your level. Uh, this would be like um, if you were doing a, a, let's just say track, for example. That's a universal sport. So if somebody's on a track team and they're working, you have to have 
time that you spend with your coach on the strategies, the breathing, the, you know, the strategy for that race and how does this race work? And then you've got your people who you run that with. We challenge and push each other. So if you and I are running next to each other, I'm going to be going and that's going to make you go like, oh, he's trying to go faster than me. And there's a competitive part of you that'll be like, I need to push myself more because I'm with my running mate and they're going harder. So you have to have people you challenge each other and you grow together with, and you can, you know, almost inspire each other by doing the same race. But then there's also the new guys who are like, man, can't wait to get to your level. And you'll go, Hey, just remember, breathe like this. Uh, this is one of the ways I do my steps. I come out hard, but then I go this, this speed in the middle. And then you finish this way. Like you can still give your advice too. And that also fills your cup. But I see a lot of people who spend most of their time helping people that are below their level, never really assessing their own level and not really pushing further. And that would be like, I've seen some people who are so interested in helping others that they help the people below their level, but they're still below average themselves, which means they operate solely in working with people who are, you know, borderline homeless or have, uh, you know, wild addiction issues or are, you know, at rock bottom pretty much most of their life or people who have no ambition, no hope. And that's where they spend a lot of their time because that's the only people below them. But if you raise your level up, it gives you a bigger window of people that you're able to actually pull up. But if you don't actually work on yourself and you don't have a mentor, you don't challenge yourself to grow, it limits who you're able to work with. And I think that's a big part of it. So that's kind of the idea, but you also, you have to take into account to fill your own cup. When do you work out? When do you spend time with the people you love? When do you fulfill your, your spiritual obligations to yourself, you know, and like fill your cup, you know, with be it God or, you know, the universe or, you know, meditation, whatever you do, whatever your system is, I think God made them all. So pick one. I don't care if you use the secret or law of vibration or whatever, but you still have to have time for that, you know? And so what's the balance between, you know, your spiritual services, you're taking care of yourself and then taking care of others. It seems like that's probably where it would be. And I would probably lean the part where I go more into my spirit part uh, would probably be more into my mentor section. You know, like, like lean on God, listen a little bit, read some Jesus. I don't know, pick a thing, but like find it, like my time that I would be doing the things for that. I would probably put that into my 33% for mentor and then working on myself with my partners. Um, that's my middle section. And then how do I serve others? And that's my bottom section. So that's where I found balance in my life. Uh, the only thing is, is I try to pack in a week's worth of stuff in one day. And that's where I was unbalanced is trying to do hmm. hustle culture, which I, I guess you're right. I never really plugged into it. I remember like the Gary V stuff, like you need to be working 26 hours a day and DM every single person. And I'm like, man, am I not doing that? <laughs> yeah no it's uh, it's 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 not sustainable and uh you eventually i i personally have felt that um trying these methods because i tried them and i was like because i can I can hold myself accountable and i'm like I, I i can let me show you how much i can give and then when i put it all in eventually like uh Motivation does run out and fatigue does wear you down. And eventually you get to a point where I feel like you reach burnout and then you just like, fuck it. You know what? Do I even want it anymore? Do I even care about it? Like you, you almost lose your entire why because it just doesn't even feel worth it anymore. Um, again, personal uh, feeling towards things where it just, you just go, I feel personally, I felt like you end up chasing the goal so much and chasing it so hard that you're only focused on the result that when you're not getting that result that you just, you, you end up going completely off. Whereas when you're enjoying the process and you're embracing everything that comes with it, oh man, that's, that's a different type of feeling. Absolutely. Dude. It's so well said. Um, I was just thinking about that too, because I think that a lot of times you see people with good intentions when they share their stuff, like the, the intention may be like focus on the journey, focus on the growth. They, they say the right words, but there's no actual steps. It's just the answers or the results, right? 
And I was thinking about like those quotes that you see, like do what others won't so you can live like others don't, you know, those kind of things. But I'll tell you right now, just because you guys have money doesn't make it so you're living better because I know people who have put all their hustle and all their time into making money. And that looks like success. You're a millionaire. Or you're doing really well. And there's other people out there who are like, I did all that. But man, was I seriously lacking in other departments because I became so one-sided focused. My relationships were all failing. My friendships were all getting flimsy at best. Um, my dynamics for my own spiritual like health have dropped substantially. My physical health may also not be sustaining themselves. But man, do I got money. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I work with guys who are millionaires or guys who are, you know, own nine figure businesses who are like, man, I'm doing so good in this one category, but man, my marriage and my relationship with my kids and stuff like this are really struggling. And we see it a lot. And there's a lot, there's, there's some guys who are recognizing that too and flipping the script, but the challenge would be do what others won't. So you can live like others don't. Well, how are they living? You're like, well, they have the big house or the nice cars. They have all the stuff. I'm like, no, no, no. How are they living? It's like, well, they're on their second divorce and their kids don't talk to them anymore. And uh, all of their friends are their employees, which means they all are relying on them for some reason. And you're like, mm, how does that quality of life look? Do you want to yeah, live no. like that person doesn't? Because most don't live like that. So they live like others don't, true. But is it what you want? No, of course not. And and this and it's exactly that. Like this nailed it, like spot on is is it it's why I got to a point where I said, like, I'm I'm unhappy. You know, you you get to this point where you just realize like I'm you haven't even reached the the goal that you've set out, but you're like, if this is what it's taking, I'm not I'm not enjoying this. Like I if this is what it takes to get there. Like, fuck this, man. <laughs> it's, it's why you end up bailing because it just doesn't feel worth it. It's it's not about not not wanting to go through hardship, not about um, embracing challenges, but it just feels like, you know, is the juice really worth the squeeze? Okay. And um, sometimes it just it just doesn't feel like that. And and that's why I, I've, I've wanted to. And this is why I've changed my approach on 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 how I how I look at things and it's, it's exactly why we're speaking about exactly that as balance is that I don't want to neglect everything while I chase uh, my goals and my dreams I want to be able to still have good relations I don't want to have to dis disregard my health in in order to pursue other other aspects I don't you know it's 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 a how do I say it's a factor of being able to have a well-rounded, I keep saying it, balance <laughs> of it all. And, and and that's what it's about for me. It's easier said than done, but this this is this is why I'm trying to to figure that out and ex like you know, make sure that I don't disregard one thing in in pursuit of another. I think, yeah, it's a good call. And I want to kind of like we I'm gonna transition off of cancel or not cancel, but uh the uh, hustle culture. And, and the hustle, 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 um, because I think people are starting to realize like we're hustling really hard, but maybe not in the exact areas it needs to be. And we're just burning out, we're burning out in all categories. And I think that's not really a, it's, it, I'd be open to have somebody who does successfully do hustle culture, jump in with us. I would like that because I do see most people who are like, it seems more like a, I'm really good in this category, but struggling in this one, this one, and this one because of it. And, you know, and, and credit to people who are doing successful. I think I saw, uh, what was the guy's name? It was uh, Ryan something. I forget the guy's name. Is uh, He's like a multimillionaire. Simple name. I forget the name. It was Ryan something. I was, I was listening to some of his stuff. And because of uh, his things, he was saying, like, I made all the money, but I was realizing I was lacking in every other category and had to change things. So there are people shifting. I know that Les McDaniels, he runs a, a group with some guys uh, called Front Row Dads, who instead of businessmen who have families, they're family men who have businesses. And so there's people who are realizing that hustle culture doesn't work. But then it gets into the part where you said, I'm happy. You want to do some more wordplay? 
like respect? Hook me up. Yeah, you want to get into it? Okay. So this is a fun training on this one. All right. I want to do it. What is happiness? Like I want it. Everybody wants happiness. We want it. Andrew, help me. I want happiness. How do I get it? What is it? I want it. Like what's right. happiness to you? Like what is it for you? Okay, let's see here. Happiness. <laughs> um, so happiness, I feel like, is a state of mind. Um, I feel that it's a combination of fulfillment, desire, An achievement. Mm, yeah, maybe not the last one. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm gonna go with that. Uh, it's it's a state of mind. Um, okay, I got it. So, all right. So, it's a state of mind with these other three words. Okay. What's fulfillment? Because I got to get at least these three down so I can get the other one. So I need to have these other pieces. All right. What is fulfillment? So I can do that. I want to do fulfillment. How do I do it? Uh, fulfillment. Uh, whew, okay. Let's break it down. Um, <laughs> here we go. Um, fulfillment is in me. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, all right, that one's tricky. Okay, maybe let's jump and into- this is a tough one. Because I feel like I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I'm, scared, I'm scared to use a different word because then I'm even thinking like a <laughs> fulfillment when you feel like there's nothing lacking anymore, where you feel like you, you, you're no longer empty, where they feel like there's, there's nothing more that you can add. Um, and I feel like that is, that is the point of fulfillment, where you feel like you've reached the pinnacle, um, rooftop. Oh, shit. Fulfillment. Yeah. Have you ever felt like, have you ever filled it all the way up to where you're at the pinnacle and there is no more room to grow? No, definitely not. Have you ever been happy? No, yeah, 100%. Oh, well then shit, maybe it's not this fulfillment thing. Cause if I have to be at the pinnacle of something to even get it, but then you've had it without being at the pinnacle, maybe that's not what it is. Oh shit, you know, I knew this is exactly when this was going to go. <laughs> so maybe I don't need to be at the pinnacle of something for fulfillment to be able to be happy. Here's something even funnier. I'm just going to throw it out there. Have you ever seen people have happiness or happy people who don't know these definitions? Yes. Okay, so maybe time. we don't need those definitions. So that makes it even trickier because I know people who don't know the answer who still have it. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Shit. I want to change my answer. Yes. Yeah, so what's, <laughs> what's the new answer? What's the new answer? I, I, I would have scrapped the last three words. I want to just say that happiness is a state of mind. Happiness is, 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 is something different to everybody else. I, what, what, what makes one person happy that makes another person could make another person unhappy. Um, Happiness to me is something different to you. Even it's, it's, it's a state of mind. I'm going to just stay with that. All right. It's a state of mind. Cool. I want to be in that state. How do I get access to that state? Because I want to do it. So how do I do it? Um, fine. I was literally about to just say, find what makes you happy. Uh <laughs> yeah. Happiness is finding happiness. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, how to achieve that state of mind? Like, I want to do it. I'm in. Like, you, you, you got me. I'm in. I want to do it. How do I do it? Mm -mm. No, I'm tapping out, Rick. This is, this is, this. I, I wish I could explain it. This, this. You did good. You did this, good. It's, this, it's really hard to do this. This is so hard. That, like, how do we explain a feeling? You know, it's really difficult to do this. And somehow people are all seeking this and we're looking for um, the answers, the convoluted answers often. You did a really good job of going, let's try and put some words to it. Other people have done this too. Harvard professors do this. So it's not to say like what you're doing was like, that's incorrect. Other people do this. So it doesn't seem like you're that incorrect. 
Uh, you said fulfillment, desire, achievement. It's actually really, really close. I can remember um, Arthur C. Brooks. I'd love to have a conversation with him because I would challenge some of his things. He's a Harvard professor who teaches a class on happiness. His three words that he used is satisfaction, enjoyment, and purpose, which is very close to fulfillment, desire, achievement. Hmm. So oh. not bad because you're sitting there on par with a Harvard professor. Well done, Andrew. Oh, yeah. Well wow. done. Wow. Wow. Well, <laughs> well, we run into a problem though. The answer for what happiness is, like you said, is subjective. We all have a different answer. Well, that's tricky because it's an answer that we all have a different answer to. We all want it, but it's different for each of us, correct? You know, for one correct. person, it may be uh, being out on a beach. Another person, it might be an autumn day. Those are both outside, but very different versions of it. One person's happy is coming home after a long day and face planning in bed because now I am home. And another person's is going out and partying. The opposite, but both are happy. So what is happiness? Well, you're right. It's subjective. We all have a different definition for this word. Here's where it gets tricky. Well, what was fulfillment is the same as what is satisfaction? Well, that's also a subjective word. We're probably going to all have different answers for satisfaction. Okay. What about enjoyment? Well, we may have different answers for what we find enjoying or enjoyable or what enjoyment is or how we would explain it. And then what is the profoundness of what is required for you to feel you have achievement or purpose? What is that, right? Well, purpose is profound. To understand the reason why behind the why, it's a deep journey. It's very hard to figure out what's the purpose for things. Now, we can surface answer them, but again, that would end up being highly subjective, right? Here's right. the reason why this is difficult. We have a subjective word that everybody wants, and the answer is three more subjective words. Now you can see why people have to take a few month class to try to figure out what the heck you're even talking about. And at the end of it, you may be even more confused than when you started, because now we're trying to all figure out the subjectivity of a word that we used to have before we even took this class. When I was a kid, I used to just have fun and be happy. And I didn't know any of these definitions, which means I don't know if the definitions are really the way. Do you want the warrior's way definition for happiness? Hook me up. It's interesting. And it deserves to be challenged because we had to do it too. The answer that we came up with is this is word for word. The blips. Well, let's just change it. The awareness of the blips. B-L-I-P-S. Blip. The blips in life that are found in nouns. And you could probably throw some verbs in there too. Slash verbs. This cannot be the fucking definition. That is crazy. Could you repeat that just real quick? The awareness of the blips in life that are found in nouns. Also some verbs. Huh. Let's go through it word for word. What's awareness? To be able to see it. Huh. I see it. I'm aware of this. You can't make any choices that you don't know exist, right? And so we have to at least be recognizing like, hey, this is great, right? We have to at least see it. What's a blip? A blip is by definition, something temporary. This means it is not supposed to last. In fact, it's meant to only be here and gone. And it may be seconds. It may be minutes. It could be hours. It could be days. It could be weeks, but eventually it will be done. And over a long enough time frame, everything ends and then starts anew everything is meant to end every new every ending is another you know be every new beginning is another beginning's end you know that kind of thing i 100 percent uh, of course everything okay. everything that starts must end so everything's temporary well that means the temporary things the moments that we're in that we should be aware of are fragile and beautiful and not meant to last and a lot of times we'll miss those now let's look at life. Life is how we measure time. In our time, in our lifetime, how many of these blips have we had? How many moments could we catch? Now, what are the moments that usually bring us the most happiness? 
people, places, things, nouns, right? Oh, I had my favorite cup of coffee this morning, or I got to spend time with you today, or, you know, I love being in this at the beach or on the mountain or, you know, in the woods or, you know, wherever. I love being in certain places, people, places, things. Being home, for example, is where happiness is, whatever it could be. But we also have some verbs in there because sometimes you may love skiing or bowling or fishing or dancing or something. So there's a thing, right? People, places, things, and verbs, right? So let's look at it. Happiness is having an awareness that everything that you have going on around you, that's good. It's not meant to last, which makes it precious and beautiful and fragile and worth noticing. And if you can catch that you're in the middle of a beautiful moment in the middle of it, that awareness makes it so you can feel all of these satisfaction, joy, purpose, fulfillment, desire, achievement. But did you see that you're in the middle of a blip right now? This conversation that you and I are having is temporary. We will have this conversation and then this day will never happen again, ever in history. There will never be, right now it is May 24th, 2023. It is 1.29 p.m. here. It's much later where you are. (laughs) It is pushing summer here. It's winter there. And all of these things, the way they are at this exact time, will never be like this on this exact day ever again forever. There'll be days that are similar, but it will not be this day ever again, which means today is filled with blips that will never, ever, ever happen again. But do we have the awareness that we're in one? I like that. It's it's such a good definition. The simplicity is what makes it genius. I don't have to define more words to understand it. I can go, hey, did you notice that the good stuff you have around you isn't meant to last? And that's not sad. It just means appreciate it more while it's happening. And you'll find happiness is actually all around you. In conveniences, in relationships, in places, in things. You're surrounded with blessings. But if you don't look for them, you'll miss them. And you'll just find the coal amongst the diamonds and go look at this bad piece of rock that I have. You had to move a bunch of diamonds to get to it. And those are, I've had too many diamonds not looking for diamonds anymore. No, I, 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 I love that because I, I, I read something once. I, I, I wouldn't be able to reference it, um, but um, it said that in order, to, if, if you go through life thinking that you're only going to feel one emotion, that being happiness, it's ludicrous. How can you expect to only feel one emotion your entire life? Um, and you know, if if you take that into consideration, then happiness and moments of joy are uh, always are so much more meaningful because you felt other moments um, of despair, uh, sadness, um, fear, whatever you, whatever you want to call them. Um, and it, it's why what makes what makes this feeling of happiness so so meaningful. You know, you've heard the sayings: you, know, you can't have light without dark, good without evil. It, it would make no sense if you only had one without the other. Kind of take away from everything else. Yeah, I think even in Vanilla Sky, the good is not as good without the bad. Exactly, and. So I just, I like this definition because it's just being able to like, you know, the awareness of the blips in life that are found in nouns and a few verbs. Um, <laughs> Your specific verbs. <laughs> I think that's funny too, because you'll see people get mis- misled that if I have this, then I'll live happily ever after. <sighs> yeah, and I'll yeah. only ever be happy from this day forward. You know, I've actually heard, um, couples where like she would tell the guy i thought if i would marry the right one that i would live happily ever after and i'm like are you in a disney movie real life is not (laughs) this like you're gonna have your ups and downs but that like you just explained the recognition of i'm in and up and i can compare it to when we were down and then we're back up again are you really appreciating these beautiful temporary ups or are you always worrying about it's going to be down again and you're missing all of the amazing blips that you're surrounded by. 
all of your opportunities for happiness. I had a, a guy who was really big into words also explain like the root of the word happiness uh, came from like, I think it was a Latin term for hap equals temporary. That's why happens, uh, happy, like it happened, you know, those kind of things. He's like, that came from the terminology that was designed to be temporary, which means happiness is not supposed to last forever, but that's what makes it beautiful when it's there. And so if you can recognize that, if you have the awareness of that blip, because it's not meant to last forever, well, then you'll find that you're actually surrounded by happiness, even when things are going right, like pretty bad, because a lot of times the bad thoughts can oftentimes reveal opportunity for the good ones. Hmm. That's a really good way of looking at it. Hmm. You know, <laughs> you always pull the whole page. Um. <laughs> That's why it's pretty fun. I'm not going to go all Alan Watts on you because I love listening to his like breakdowns for like words and how we make up words to explain other words and why words are so weird the way that we try to name everything and call things what they are. That by itself is its own funny conundrum. But like, uh, it's pretty fun when we play with these words and go like, what are these words that we all wanted? Like respect and happiness. You know, what is joy? What is fulfillment? What are these words? And we're like, fuck, we use them, but I don't know what they mean. And it's different for everybody. And I don't know how to explain it. We need, we need trust, but what the heck is that? How do I do it? You know, we see you hear people use terminology that sounds like it's confident, so it could be true. You got to earn my respect. You got to earn my trust. I'm like, I'm in. I want to do it. How many of what do I have to earn to do it? And you're like, I don't fucking know at all. I have no idea. <laughs> and you're like, well, I'll never be able to do it. This 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 is something that has become that I've become very conscious of in the time that I've been speaking to you is, is exactly that is you, there, there are a lot of very basic and simple words that we all use in our day to day and things that you gain, not you, me, <laughs> uh, I can only speak for myself that you would assume that you, that I understand, but then when you actually break it down, it becomes completely complex and it's it's i've now gotten to a point where i i try to think about things and analyze them a little bit more deeply before i just assume that i actually know what it is that i'm feeling um or what i mean about said subject um but that's also because well We've done this a couple of times and yeah, you know, I've looked at a few words now where I go, hmm, hold up. Hmm. You know, expectation. Let's see what that is exactly. What do you mean when you speak <laughs> about respect? What do you mean when you speak about trust? What about what is morality exactly? And you're like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and it 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 allows, you know, it, it's it's good to continue to question these things because when you stop questioning them, you you don't actually look of it, look at it from a different perspective, and yeah. that's 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 what I've really like. That's what I've, I think one of the biggest takeaways uh, that I have from a lot of these sessions is that I I challenge my own thinking, in, in in many times where you know you speak about vulnerability, and I'm like, oh my word, let's not even get into that. And <laughs> there's just so many aspects in which you don't consciously think about because they've always been there. Like you've just felt like you've always known them. So you realize you don't know shit. <laughs> yeah. One thing I love that you're doing and you're doing what I call the, the difference um, between like modern day, you know, therapy or counseling versus warrior training. You're doing something that's not being taught as well as it should be. <laughs> Warriors challenge everything but this doesn't mean hostile but you're doing it right now what does that mean how does that work how does it, is this authentic to myself or not is that my thing or is that your thing 
warriors are going to be asking questions to try to figure it out. Because once you reveal the curse that's been put on you, you have to fight it to break it. We have to break that curse. It has to be broken, which means I have to challenge it. I have to go against it to break it. These are belief systems that people put into you. You're not good enough. You're never going to make it. You're not smart. You're not talented. You're not worth it. Those are doubt curses that people put on you. Put comparisons. You're not as good as them. You know, you, you're. they're not going to love you if you're really who you are. Like these curses that people put on you with, with all of these different thoughts that aren't true, but nobody challenges. And if you challenge them, you'll start to discover things about yourself. And uh, I think, who was it? I think it was Bernard Hache, if I have his name right, says, advances are made by answering questions, but discoveries are made by questioning answers. And that's what the warrior talk is. This is us going like, okay, I hear your answer, but let's go ahead and challenge the answer to see if it holds up. And that's a big part of like, you know, I was talking about the armor that you have or the way that you do things. I'm, I'm giving you praise that you are now changing from just going with the flow on what everybody says must be true to going, well, let's think about it for a second and see if it holds up. Can I really apply this? Is this useful information or are you just giving me an opinion? You know, and oftentimes people just want to share a thought without actually challenging their own thought, which means it's incomplete. It may not hold water. And people are trying to say, my boat is the best boat. And anybody who works on boats, you know, like myself, you know, metaphorical boats will say, well, I've been doing this long enough to know I see some major holes in your boat and you're going to go, nope, my boat's the best boat because I'm confident. And I'm like, you want to throw some stuff in your boat and see if it floats? No, <laughs> I don't. And I'm like, I have a boat that has people on it right now and they're doing really great. Go ahead and just put some weight on your boat and show me your way is better. And they'll put some weight on the boat and just watch it just sink right to the bottom and they'll go, oh, <laughs> damn. And I'll go, would you like to know how to repair those holes? Or do you want to just keep sinking your boat? And this is why we have to challenge. Does this hold water or not? Is this going to, is this going to float or is it going to sink? What's going to happen here? And if we never challenge it and we just go, it's good, it's fine. And we live in denial. We're going to keep sinking and wonder why everything is wet. Why everything is at the bottom of the freaking ocean. <laughs> like, why are things not going well <laughs> for me? Why does it feel like I cannot breathe? Because you know, I always feel underwater and it's because y'all, but you don't have to be if we challenge these things to see if we can fix the boat. And they're like, well, I can fix it with bubble gum. I'm like, please do. <laughs> when you're ready to learn how to weld, I've got you. You need new tools. <laughs> and uh, that, that resonates hard. Um, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. It's, it's, I, again, it was something that that I picked up through. I, I, I think it was through one of our sessions. I, I don't want to phrase it wrong, but you know, where I think it was life teaches us lessons, and life will continue to teach us those same lessons until we learn them. And I, be, I believe it was in one of your sessions. I wrote it down, and it is it's something that really sat with me because I've I've personally felt in my in my own trajectory where I've had, I've had ups and I've had downs. And there, there's always moments in life where I, I feel like I'm on the right path and I'm doing what I need to do. And this is, this is my, this is my breakthrough moment. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm there. And then some shit will just, and, it, and I do understand going through adversity. It's part of it, but there's definitely been a lesson in my life that I'm just missing. And there's just been something that it has not allowed me to get to that next level. And I feel like life has continuously given me the same lesson to learn, but I just haven't learned it. Um, hence why I'm taking a different approach to the way I've done things, because otherwise I'm going to continuously stay in that, that hamster wheel and that loophole. And, and well, this is, this is where I am now. I, I, I don't feel like I still have, I have the answer just yet, but I do feel like I'm making progress in, in exploring what that lesson may be. 
Yeah. And I think that is well, well said and good observation on your side to go. There's something there I'm not seeing, but I know that it's there. I just don't see it. And I call that the blinders when people have blinders on and you're looking through Mm. the world with just like this and you're going, man, I I'm looking as hard as I can through my blinders. I'm looking so hard through this. And maybe if I just squint harder, maybe if I just look harder, maybe if I focus more, I'll get it. And I'm like, hold on a second. You have blinders on. Let's work on taking this blinder off. And then you go, what? Hey, that's the thing (laughs) I've been looking for. It's right next to you. And I'm like, it's been next to you the whole time. But you are looking through like almost binoculars. You're looking through this and you're only looking one direction. But it's the same thing as like a telescope. How much sky is there to map out? Versus how much you can see in a telescope. And if you're looking through that one thing, you're missing so many things around you. And a lot of times the answer is right next to you, but you had blinders on. And people are trying to do as much focus on that one spot as they can when they don't realize if we just open up the view a little bit, the answers are all around you all the time. There's always opportunity but you just didn't see it because you had a blinder on. It wasn't because you weren't smart enough. It wasn't because you weren't trained enough. It wasn't because you're too slow or whatever judgments people would put on you. You just had a blinder on. You couldn't see next to you. But if Mm. you take that blinder off, you're like, oh my God, the answers are right there. And you're like, you just had a blinder on. Mm. Now you can see. And now it's time to go to the next level. But kudos to you to realizing I'm hitting a ceiling. And that's where a lot of us are at right now. I have myself, uh, a few other guys are recognizing I'm hitting a ceiling. Time for a breakthrough. And that's why the balance is coming up. That's why what is uh, what are my things I'm looking for is coming up. That's why the challenges are becoming more obvious. I am hitting a ceiling and I need a breakthrough. And when I break through, I'm going to get to the next level. And what does every next level reveal? A new devil. Yeah, every next level, there's a new devil. There's going to be a next thing I have to learn. There's going to be another breakthrough. But the cool thing about a breakthrough is there's an advancement that's like a really fast growth. And then it starts to slow down and then it plateaus again. And you're going to hit the ceiling on that level until the thing that you need to learn is learned. Now, it may not be because you're slow. It may just be next to you and you have a blinder on and can't see it. So we got to learn. Let's focus on blinders instead of how hard are you looking in that one direction? Once you remove the limiting beliefs, you're able to see a lot more. That's exactly that. Like uh, you, you use the word blinder and I kept thinking to myself like now when you were saying it and I was like, yeah, it's uh, sometimes that blinder is, well, just ignorance, <laughs> pride. Um, that blinder can be a, a lot of different things. Um, and sometimes like I said for me I, I could feel that maybe it's, it's a bit of both a bit of ignorance a bit of pride a bit of just I don't know ego could be. It's, it's a lot of different things Let's and the other, um, the other way of it is it could be you being protective I'm protecting myself from what has hurt me in the past and that has put up this defense system where now I'm looking at the world through barred windows so I can stay safe. But how much of the world can you see through your prison windows? Yeah, not enough. But I'm safe, though. And you can't hurt me in here. And the security system is very high. That means I'm safe, secure, and it's convenient in here. You can't hurt me in here. But how much awareness do you have for your opportunities when you're in prison? Yeah, it's limited. You're in prison. How many opportunities do you really have? We call it protection. And so it may not be ego. It may not be pride. It might be protection that makes it so you can't see that there's opportunities. That's why denial is so powerful. Hmm. People are seeking happiness. What do we want? I want a blip in life that's found in a noun. Well, let's look at addiction. What's a noun? Alcohol, emotional eating, drug use, Netflix, Mm. social media, porn, you name it. I want temporary happiness. I know it's not supposed to last, but that one has a a price tag to it. 
big cost. But you can't see it. Can't see it. Got those that protection mm. on. I don't want to deal with the reality of my life, so I need to find happiness in some way, shape, or form. And since I don't want to acknowledge my life, I need to feel different. Numb to alcohol. I need to feel dopamine rush. You know, maybe that's going to be in some sort of a, a hunt or a chase, or maybe it's going to be in food, sweets, junk. Maybe it's in drugs. Is it is some sort of escape? Flight mechanism is kicked on. Some sort of suppression mechanism. And the answers are right around you. But we trapped ourselves in our, our own safety, our protection. I don't want to deal with the reality of my life. And so I have to find that happiness, those blips. And I'm going to do it in any coping mechanism I've ever seen anybody else deal with it in, which can be very, very unhealthy. Uh, testify. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have, um, it's interesting that you said that. Like I, I didn't think about it from from that perspective. Um, I I can admit that I've also had my my issues in the past with drugs, with alcohol, uh, with numbing, and you know that goes hand in hand with suppression. Um, um, but it's, it's, it's short-lived and um, I can I can thankfully say I've got I've, I've managed to overcome those challenges but for a long time in my life um, that was a that was a big one for me and um, you know looking back on it now it's 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 so different <laughs> because in the state of in the during that time period there was it was almost it just felt like this is just who I am this is a part of me like this, this is what I do. Um, and now looking back, I just, <laughs> yo, sweat and regret, man. <laughs> That's why one of our first sessions, I had told you, like, it's so tough to, to like move forward from the person that you were, because it's, it's like all these things that you've done. And, you know, I, like I said, I don't like to be one that wants to just blame drugs and alcohol and, and everything else that comes with it. But mm. Definitely, de definitely played a role. I can say that. Um, a lot of things I'm not proud of, and I, that's you know, I know what happened, <laughs> but um, that you you have to move past because there's there's nothing you can do about it now, and um, that's, that's what I'm that's, that's what I'm learning to deal with. Yeah, I'm. Listen, you're not alone, bro. <laughs> you're not alone in that one. We, uh, we're doing the best that we can to cope with and deal with things that are beyond our control. And uh, that's the most common thing you see. Even like I, I my down south guys in America, my southern boys, get their asses kicked because they're, 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 reading, they're hearing the songs that say, you know, treat her, like put her first and love her with everything you got and white picket fence and give her everything that you have and love her always and do all the sweet things. And they're listening to... Uh, uh, go do your own thing, girl, uh, like leave them behind and go be free and go hat girl summer and go do your things. And they're getting their asses kicked. Now, and, oh, I told my daughter, she loves country music. I said, can you show me uh, how many songs can you find that you like that don't have alcohol? She actually really struggled to find how many songs don't have alcohol. Same thing in hip hop. I mean, give me some sure. songs without alcohol or without some negative behavior. Go ahead. Like culturally, know, not an really. you're going to see a lot of it that's going to have drinking or, um, you know, trying to hook up with as many people or steal people's girls like stealing or or getting fucked up or something. There's going to be some kind of this is how you deal with things when things are either going great or going horrible. It seems like it's the same answer. Yeah, well, pretty much. It's it's. it's that's hip hop. Yeah. So what are you we'll supposed to do? Weed. <laughs> That's it. And so what are you supposed to do then? How are you supposed to deal with real life stuff when everything's not a rap song or a country song? What are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to really deal with it? And that's where people are truly struggling. Is they're not getting tools, they're giving improper coping mechanisms. And so they're preaching addiction as the answer. And people don't challenge that. 
And that's why I like your warrior spirit to go, I got to challenge this. I don't know if addiction is the answer here. I don't know if getting trashed because she broke up with me is the right answer because the wrong me comes out after that. Is that the answer? Doesn't feel right. This is who I am. This is what I do. That's an interesting thing because that's a blinder, sir. That's a limiting belief mm -hmm. to make it so you can't see who you really are because of something that you did. I'm going to give you a piece that I gave one of my guys this morning. Like, do you know what guilt is for? Or even what guilt is? Let's just start there. Do you know what guilt is? Like the difference between guilt and shame? Uh, guilt. Uh, something you feel bad about? Shame. Something that people make you feel bad about. Very close. It's very close. Uh, guilt is feeling bad for what you did. Yeah. Shame is feeling bad for who you are. Oh, okay. Like that. Yeah, very close though. That was a good guess. Good job. So let's look at guilt by itself. I feel bad for what I did. Now let's go ahead and crush part of the shame stack that comes along with guilt. I don't know what kind of parents you had, but have you ever heard anybody say, say you're sorry, Andrew? Oh yeah, no, for sure. Say um, you're sorry say you're sorry and you're like okay i'm sorry no sorry say you're sorry and mean it yeah you ever heard that game you ever heard that one before it's a show, man it's it's <laughs> we got the same personality type like, yeah. okay what do you want i want you to be sorry okay sorry, sorry. no say you're sorry <laughs> you mean it okay sorry <laughs> like what does that mean uh if you listen to marshall rosenberg for he created nbc uh, he was calling that jackal speak. This is when people just make you feel bad because that makes them feel better. I want you to feel bad so I feel like you're learning a lesson here. It's shame. You should feel bad for who you are. I need you to feel bad so you learn. This is the opposite. It is incorrect. So let's go to guilt. I did something bad. Say you're sorry. I don't have to be in a sorry state to learn a lesson. So in which case, let's go ahead and challenge it. I don't think guilt is necessary for you to need to feel bad to learn. I believe guilt is the flashlight to let you know there is something there that makes you feel bad so you can work on it. I like that. So like, oh shit, I did something that hurt somebody. I don't feel good when I hurt somebody I care about. I don't need to feel like shit to learn. I don't like doing things that hurt people I love. So I can acknowledge the thing I did. I can see where it went wrong and how it hurt them. And I can say, this is what I'm going to do to change or evolve out of the old behavior that makes both of us feel bad. And in most cases, whenever I've seen people do that, if I was like, Andrew, I totally screwed up, man. I know that this affected you and it affected me this way. From now on, I'm going to start doing it this way. So that never happens again, man. My lesson is learned. Cool, man. Like, are we good? Uh, yeah, I, that, 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 that hits so much harder as well. Like it's a flashlight to let you know that you did something wrong. That is, that is a much better way of looking at it. Like mm -hmm. tenfold. Um, I think it also speaks so much more volume. Hmm. Yeah, it just gives you the opportunity. This is where I need to work and heal, not how I'm supposed to stay and negatively feel. Hmm. Like I don't need to sit and feel bad to learn. It just gets in the way of growth and healing. But it is supposed to make you aware that there's a spot you're supposed to work on. Not definitely. Definitely. So that's I what like it's that. for. That's what that's good. It works for you. Like, damn, I screwed up. I feel like I screwed up. What did I do? How did that affect you? And what am I going to do to grow from it? Now I can let all the rest of it go because I got the lesson I needed from that. And people are generally cool with that. Now, which is better? Me going, hey, I see where I messed up and I'm going to grow from it and we're going to be better together. 
from this point forward, I'm going to keep working on this thing that makes it never happen again, or I'm sorry. <laughs> Are we good? Nah, devs, devs, devs option A. Like it's, 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 that's why like I, it, it, it spoke a lot more where this is it, the, like I said, the flashlight to let you know that you have done something wrong and allow you to to give that acknowledgement and recognize that. I, I'm again, I'm, 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 it's, I'm, I'm looking at it introspect because, like I said, there's, there's a lot of things when I think about my past, um, things I'm not happy with, and you know, things like I do feel guilty about. But it's because of these things that I'm trying to better myself. It's because of these things that I, that I want to make a, a conscious change. It's because of these things that I, I want to be better so that I don't have repeat offenses and you know, repeat that same behavior because. You know, that, that, like I said, that's, that, that stuff sits with you and you want to be able to make peace with your demons. Well, there are some demons we don't need to make peace with yeah. and I'll show you how you kill them. Ah, well, even better. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> like certain that. things, certain um, things are not our friend and we don't have to be friendly to things that have intent to do harm. That's the warrior's way. There's a balance I, to it, but I, this is going to be. There's some things that you you there are, are ill intent. They have ill intent for you, and there's some things that are just misunderstood, and we have to figure out which is which. Which is why we have to challenge. Hmm. Warriors challenge everything, and that's and that's and that's what I like is that I've I'm I'm, I'm I'm constantly trying to develop that mindset. I don't expect it to happen overnight. There's a lot of things that I still don't understand, um, but that's why week for week. I, <laughs> You'll keep seeing me, and it's it's why that I, I that I keep on this path of consistency because I'm I'm more determined to keep moving forward than going back, no matter how long that takes. Because um, when you get to a point where enough is enough, you just you know you gotta you gotta learn that lesson, and I'm I'm, I'm tired of it repeating itself <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely man super proud of you this is a good day man very cool so oh, man. let's let's call it so, there i feel like we, we filled up the cup for the day lots to process lots to go through but man it's always an honor to have these these growth moments with you man thank you so much i say thank you Rick. it's uh like i said you you always leave me like in like the best mood um sometimes it's <laughs> it's it's tougher than others mm -hmm. but um like today was one of those, like I said, it's um, insightful and again, always leaving with so much to think about and it just, just leaves me, in, I always walk away better than I came in. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. And I say thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. It's an honor. And uh, I look forward to, if any of you guys are listening to this, we uh, we have opportunities too to be able to work with us and work with uh, the Warriors way. If you want to learn more, uh, check us out on the site, book a time, and let's go ahead and teach you how to take some of your tools that you need to fight with your authentic style and learn how to challenge in your way so that you can also learn how to handle no matter what situation comes up, you'll have the tools and be prepared to battle. And you don't have to do it alone. So Andrew, thank you again for another episode of the battlefield of the mind and being able to come all the way from south africa to give us your beautiful energy and be with us on your growth journey also it's nothing but a pleasure keep doing what you're doing rick all right later thank everybody. You.